Hi, I'm Chef Gail Sokol and welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to the jungle and we're going to be making a zebra layer cake. And zebra cakes have been out for a little while, but they can get wild and woolly and you can make them any color combination you want. They are amazing. So you can knock your kid's socks off by making weird, weird, beautiful stripes in their cake and you don't even know it's in there till you open the cake up and cut into it. So they're amazing. And the other thing, it uses a different method of mixing, at least my recipe does, than I've ever done with you before. So I hope you stay tuned and find out what it is. So the first thing you want to do is preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I have sprayed two nine inch round layers with layer cake pans with um, nonstick cooking spray. You could use butter, whatever you're used to using. And then I cover them with a parchment cake circle, spray them again, flour them, and then put them aside, all right? And if you wanna see a video of how to prepare your pans, take a look, I have a YouTube video on that. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is go to our mixer. And in my mixer, I have three cups of all-purpose flour. I'm gonna be adding one and a half cups of granulated sugar, what? Normally I do the creaming method of mixing, right? Where Chef Gale takes granulated sugar and softened butter and creams it till it's light and fluffy. Not in this one. This is known as the two-stage method. The two-stage method instead of the two-step method. Watch this. Very, very cool, super easy to do and super tender and I'll explain why. So all our dry ingredients are going in here. This is one tablespoon plus a teaspoon of baking powder because we really want this to rise. And it's not going to be that high a cake, so we need all the help we can get. Three quarters of a teaspoon of table salt. And then I'm going to take a whisk and whisk it up. If you don't want to use a whisk, you can just use your paddle attachment. But these are all our dry ingredients, all in one fell swoop in the electric mixer. All right, like I said, what is she doing? So this is known as the two-stage method. Again, I will say it again. Now in here, and I'm not gonna add it yet, I have five egg whites, five large egg whites. I have one cup of whole milk, and I have two teaspoons of pure vanilla extract, and I'm just gonna whisk that up. These are our liquids. They're the two-stage part. They get added in two stages, or two steps. This is one and a half sticks of cabot butter, glorious cabot butter. I'm gonna put that in here and it's been softened. And I want you to come over and take a look. Again, I am putting my fat or my butter in with my dry ingredients. Why am I doing that? Because this actually, this fat will coat all the gluten strands or the protein strands in the, in the flour because the gluten hasn't formed yet. So whatever liquid we do add will be impervious to any type of water-based ingredients like egg whites and milk, which have some water in them. So very little gluten forms, and that leaves you with a tender cake. And zebras are so nice and fluffy and tender, right? Not really. They're wild wildebeest, so we don't want to get too close. But this really makes the cake super tender because at this stage, we're actually covering each and every little flour strand with a fat. So once you have that done, you just have to make sure you see that your, you can just see that your uh, flour and your fat is sort of combined nicely together, all your dry ingredients. And then on low speed, I'm gonna add these in two stages, all right? Just add like half. All right, just let it mix. It looks like a funky, almost like a batter or a, a dough in the beginning, and you can see how thick it looks. Look at it, don't get discouraged. This is what it's supposed to look like, and then you add a little bit more. Do this on low speed so you're not wearing it. It doesn't look like a cake batter, does it? But it is, it's gonna be a delicious cake batter. And we haven't striped it yet, so just wait for that. All right, and I'm adding this in more than two stages because I really want you to be able to see all the stages that it goes through. And then I'm gonna just turn up my mixer a little bit because we have really decreased gluten so much 
that I'm not worried about making too much gluten. So I'm just gonna go around here. You know what I always say, right? I always say there's always that bump in the bottom of the electric mixer, so make sure you go around and give it one good go around. Whee! Done, batter done. Okay, and look at that gorgeous batter, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous, you are gorgeous, you two-stage method. So again, now you know a different method of mixing. So far, in many of my videos, I've done creaming, I've done the dumping method or the one stage method or the one step where all the liquid ingredients are added to all the dry ingredients. And now you have the two stage method. All right, not to be confused with the two step dancing. Okay, so I'm gonna go around. Remember I always tell you go around because you got that little bump in the bottom, that little bump from the bottom of the mixer. It's gorgeous. Now we wanna make stripes. So I've decided I want blue and white stripes. And this is a white cake. That's why there's only egg whites in it. So it's actually bright white. I want to really see the stripy colors. So what I have done is I have two one quarter cup solid measuring cups. If you want to use ice cream scoops, you can. Just make sure they're the same size. All right, about two ounces. All right, and I'm gonna have this. So this, this particular recipe makes about six cups of batter. So I'm gonna take a little bit less than that, just in case some get stuck to the bottom of the bowl. So I'm gonna take about two and three quarter cups of batter, all right? And you can approximate it. If you have a little more of one color than another, there's no zebra police that are gonna come and get you. All right, so don't worry about it. And I have this beautiful, beautiful, and a lot of it, gel food coloring. I chose like a royal blue, like I'm wearing. So I'm gonna put my batter in here. And if you're wearing anything white, you might want to wear an apron over it because food coloring, as I always say, is forever. And it will be hard to get out. So I wanna get all this glorious batter out. Right. I'm going to get as much as I can. And this is not a marble cake. This is a zebra cake. And if you wanted to, you could put some chocolate into one half or any other color you want. Or you could color both. All right. So I'm not going to color both. Of course, I have a blue spatula because this spatula probably could get dyed if I didn't. It'll come out, though. And I'm just going to fold the color in, and you really want it nice and dark. All right, so I got a lot more dye under here, food gel. Look how beautiful that is. So is it gonna match my sweater? That is the question of the day. Oh, it might. Very nice. Look how beautiful. It looks like as pretty as a Nantucket sunset. And I want this nice and dark. So if you want it lighter and you want pastels, let's say you're making a little, little girl's birthday party and you want something a little bit more subtle, you know, by all means, just put a little bit of uh, pink or red food coloring in and you'll get a nicer, more subtle, gentle color. Whatever you want to call it, more of a gentle, subtle effect. I like it really contrasty. So I want white against blue. Look at the difference. White and then this gorgeous blue. Gorgeous blue. Make sure you get it all in there that there's no marbling. All right. Now what you're going to do next is you're going to keep them apart and you're going to bring your cake pans. And your oven is all ready to go. So what you're going to do, and I have two little spatulas. I got my, my little cups, so I'm gonna take one quarter cup of, just pick a color and you wanna put it directly in the center. Take a look, in the center. Okay, don't smooth it out, just leave it in the center. And you're gonna do one for each one. All right, each one. 
You can round it out a little bit, but you really don't want to move it too much. And then you're going to put that down. And then I come over to my beautiful blue. And then you're going to put that, look at what I'm doing, right in the center. Right in the center. All right. Do another one right in the center. And they're not going to come out exactly alike, but that's the fun of it. No two zebras are alike, right? And then you're going to put this down and you're going to go back to white. And every once in a while, you're just going to sort of swirl it. All right? But not too much. Don't, not too many bionics. You know, you don't want it to be too powerful a swirl. All right? You just want to do that. So we've already had our white. Now we're doing blue again. Put it on top. Don't be so perfect with it. Don't worry about it. Again, you're going to just alternate. Every time you add a color, just give it a little swirl and a little bang, bang, bang. You're going to keep doing that. White, blue, white, blue, white, blue until you're all done with your batter. Bake it 25 to 30 minutes until a small knife comes out clean. This is what you get. So I did green and white for my last ones to show you. Look how gorgeous they are, right? Are, are we talking zebras? These are prettier than the zebras in the zoo. So if you want to see how to fill and frost these, be stay tuned for some wonderful videos I'm going to be coming out with. So I hope you become a subscriber. Till next time.